Saul was more concerned about his reputation before the people yeah. than he was about grieving God and losing the Holy Spirit or losing God's hand over his life. He had a carnal sorrow. Mm -hmm. And you know it because when Keisha read that last couple of verses, he said he repented again. He came back and said, I'm sorry. I am. And then he turned around in the same breath and said, look, I'm sorry. I've, I've sinned, but honor me before the people. What in the world? This pride and arrogance is deep. We're seeing it for real, for real. In Christian leaders. It's so nasty. It's so arrogant. It's so deep. It's a turn off the people. That people want to be honored. Don't get me wrong. Give honor where honor is due. I mean, for real, for real, people are laboring intensely to carry this gospel. But don't ask to be honored yourself. Jesus. We got a problem then. I got a problem when you're trying to meet with the team about how to honor you. I have a problem when we got to meet with the team every time you turn around about your life and your family being blessed and your books and your this. Because the reality is we need to be meeting about how we're going to reach the lost. And if I get something in the process, wonderful. Because the truth be told, we need it. But it's not about that attitude. David had some issues. We know he was a murderer. We know he was an adulterer. We know he continually made some bad decisions. But why would God say that he is a man after my own heart? Right. Because he cried out, God, do not take your spirit from me. Because I recognize that I can't live without you. Because I recognize that within myself, I don't have the strength. And I need you, God. And I recognize, God, that I made some mistakes. Yes. And now I got some people looking at me funny. But God, if you would just stay with me, yes. I won't disappoint you. Yes. I'll do what you call me to do. Yes. If you just stay with me, Lord. Yes. David's concern was not people. Because we do mess up. And it's the time to sit down, but it's the time to get back up. And I want somebody to know on tonight that your time to get back up is here. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The Lord, the Lord is saying on tonight that some of you guys have set out. Let, let, me just, let me just go with this. Some of you all have heard the call and you didn't respond. Some of you responded and stuff got so crazy that you check out. Jesus. It's a lot of groups in here. Yes, yes. And some of you are in the in the process of, of working this thing and running after it and and you have not stepped yet into the fullness. My God. Because it's still some of your own ideas and your own thoughts that you still kind of holding on to. And the Lord wants that total get out of the boat mentality. Jesus. But on tonight, this message, you're not here by coincidence. I'm not believing people coming up in the church and some of them the message is for them and some of them is not. When a message goes out from here and you're in the building, it's for you. The question is, did you catch it up in your spirit or did you let it pass you by because you refuse to believe that it's for you? So this message is for everyone here on tonight. That you are a part of the 11th hour work. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. The reality is this work is going to take some time and you are a part of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. We have to have the brokenness of David and the brokenness of those 11th hour laborers who went and they, they said yes and they didn't stay idle and they went and did what God called them to do. Because what I like at the end of the story is that at the end, everybody got rewarded equally. That's right. So it really wasn't about you, what you get and what I get. At the end of the day, Stop worrying about all that. We're all going to be rewarded. Yeah. Even the ones with an attitude. This God so gracious yeah. and merciful. Yeah. Even the ones who some interpretations say they threw the money down. Wow. Even the attitude. And he said, he said friend, have I not done fair to you? Have I done you so wrong? But I want you all to know something. When I looked up the word friend, because my, my thing is, why did he call you? Why are you being called friend? For real, for real. With that attitude. 
And I looked it up, and there's several different words, friend. And the word friend is used twice in the way that it's used in the scripture. It's used in this scripture and in the scripture where the Lord hugs Judas right. and says friend. Those are the two times that this word friend is used in this way with this definition. And it means that not like friend when he called the disciples my close acquaintances, my brethren, those that I walk with. Mm -hmm. It was friend as in, and I don't want to be called that. Oh my God. I don't want to be called that. I don't want to be standing up saying I'm a friend of God and I'm that kind of friend. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be able to sustain the increase that he's going to bring. Because he is bringing an increase. Because there's a work that has to be done, Pastor Dunn, like never before. And it takes some resources to do it. So the question of resources, like Hope said earlier, leave that up to God. Because if you are obedient to the call, and if you are humble before God and you seek him, and you don't go before him, but you don't lag behind him either. He's going to release what you need in his time. I see it like this. If you don't have it, maybe it's because you don't need it. If you don't have it yet, maybe it's just not that serious yet. Maybe it's serious to you. The Lord dealt with me. I had, gained a, had a real job for five years. And it was something that I was trying to do for my family and do, especially for my daughter who's still at home. I had a mind that some things I need to make happen. I need like some health insurance. I need like some this. I need like to move. I need to do some things. I'm not feeling like a real woman. I'm not taking care of what I need. And the Lord had hit me with this revelation about two months ago. That in six years, from age 12 to just about 18, I allowed you to invest something in your child that a check could have never done. Wow. I allowed you to release something because you weren't working from seven to seven and you weren't running all over the place. I allowed you to release something that I know is more valuable than any house you could have ever wow. built and anything you could have ever done. And furthermore, the years you didn't have insurance, ain't nobody get sick for real, for real. Can I keep it real up in here? You back. 
When you knew honestly in your heart, you were believing God and you knew in your heart you wanted to be used by God. That you didn't have a problem giving. That you share, that you love. And you watch people pass you by and it looked like you were idle, but I'm so glad on tonight that your idleness was just preparation for this hour. Hallelujah. It was just preparation. And you really weren't being, being passed by, you were being built up. Mm -hmm. I just thank God on tonight. And the very last thing that Jesus said is, many are called, but few are chosen. I've struggled with that phrase. And I want you all to think, as we close, I struggle with that phrase because I said, what does that really mean? Many are called but few are chosen. Does that mean there's some special group of people that are chosen as opposed to people that are called? And I looked it up, Pastor Dunn, I looked it up deep, because I wanted to know what was the difference between called and chosen. And when I looked up the meaning of the word chosen, it simply means many are called, but few choose. The word chosen actually meant choose. In other words, it's not on God. It's not some special. Wow. It's not some special favorites. It's not some special something. It's the ability for those that he called to choose. And there's some things that have been blocking us from choosing. And the one thing I'm learning, I could preach hard, I could pray hard and lay hands and do all this, but I'm learning the reality is that if you don't want this, it don't matter. I don't even waste time doing some of the things I used to do because God is maturing me. Because the reality is, people can lay hands on you and prophesy to you to your blue in the face. You can have 40 journals of prophetic words, but if you never choose, it will fall to the ground and die because obedience is what activates anything that the Lord speaks. Whenever a prophet came with a word, there had to be a response of obedience. Or either it was a warning, or either it was some instruction. So on tonight, I want you all to really close your eyes and really deeply search yourself. What is it that's hindering you from not just receiving the call at the 11th hour, but choosing? Is it your own self-perception? Is it your low self-esteem? Is it because you made so many mistakes that you just don't really think that God will back you? What is it that blocks us? Make sure that we will begin to choose and we will begin to make the hard choices that will cause us to be first. Because God wants to do a divine reversal. But before it can happen, you have to choose. If everybody could just stand and lift your hands in the presence of God as a sign of surrender. If you can just lift your hands, if you're able, as a sign. And only do this if you feel this. If you don't feel it, don't do it. Because there's something about making vows and commitments to God and not... not not doing the things that need to be done. But if you really believe in your heart that this word is for you, and this is the moment in your life where you have to choose some things, I just want you to lift your hands. And I just want you to just lift your hands as if a child that is lifting their hands to their father saying, pick me up, mom, pick me up, dad, because I'm tired of walking. I can't take any more steps. I'm about to fall, but when I lift my hands, I'm just saying, pick me up. Because you are my dad. You are my father. You are the one that's going to take me higher. Higher than where I am right now. You're going to give me the ability to make the right decisions. You're going to give me the ability to choose the things I need to choose. You're going to give me the ability to be healed of the things that I need to be healed of. In the name of Jesus. 